I'd like to welcome you all to this roundtable session, looking at the issue of, are we doing enough to secure our critical transportation infrastructures? We are joined by a fantastic panel of experts who I will introduce in just a moment. But I would like you to take this opportunity to remind that you can get involved in the session by posting any questions you may have in the session chat. And time permitting, we will be opening the floor for a Q&A session at the end of the discussion. So let me introduce you to the panel. So we have with us today, Eddie Tees, Vice President for Cybersecurity at Alstom Secu uh, Cybersecurity in France. Noam Krakower, Chief Resource Officer IELTA Israel. Noam has just been with us, you know, in the previous keynote. And Joseph Shavid, who is the head of ICS Cybersecurity at the Department of uh, Ministry of Environmental Protection in Israel. So uh, welcome aboard, uh, Yossi, how are you? Fine, thank you for uh, inviting me here. Well, it's my pleasure. I mean, uh, it's always a privilege to have you with us. So let me, uh, I think uh, Noam Krakover is, is connecting right now. Uh, uh, long, time, here. long time no see, Noam. Yeah, <laughs> my pleasure. So we have with us Nossi, Josi Shavit. I don't know if you know Josi. No, I, uh, I heard a lot about Josi, but we never met yet. Okay, so basically <laughs> Josi, you know, is, is the head of ICS cybersecurity at the department, Ministry of Environmental Protection. So he has been with us many times, you know. Um, he's gonna be talking about, it's very specific, it's about transportation of hazardous materials. So there is a new cyber regulation that has been created by his department, the department he was for, you know. Mm, yeah, so just Josie, correct me if I say something that is not totally accurate because I, I want to be, you know, accuracy is important. I don't want to confuse the audience. So they have created a new cyber regulation that is, is, is unique in the world. And, and it's, covering, it's covering something that is, 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 is concerning. And it's again, it's the transportation of hazardous materials. And, and last but not least, we have with us Eddie, Eddie Tiz. Eddie, please, how do I pronounce your surname? Eddie Tiz? Eddie Tiz? Eddie Tiz. Eddie Tiz. So yeah. uh, we have with us Eddie Tiz, who is the Vice President for Cybersecurity at Alstom. Uh, he's based in, 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 in France, in Paris, right? Correct. Okay, so uh, Eddie, let me introduce you to the, to the rest of the panel. Uh, Noam Krakover, who is the Chief Risk Officer of uh, IAI Elta, uh, the Israeli aerospace industry, he has just had a keynote uh, covering a topic that is fascinating. I don't know if you have the opportunity to, to join the keynote. It was about cybersecurity for smart mobility, a uh, global necessity, okay? And Josi Shavit, who is a, a, a basically a, the head of ICS cybersecurity at the Department Ministry of Environmental Protection. Uh, Josi is gonna provide uh, quite different insight that is, is more focused on, it's, it's kind of a, you know, a niche thing, focus on the transportation of hazardous materials, okay? Okay. So uh, this, again, is a fascinating topic. Uh, people are, you know, we are seeing a lot of innovation in the industry, in the transportation industry. Everything is, right now, is, if, you, if you allow me, is smart, which means, you know, a massive digitalization of everything from trains, you know, aircrafts, you know, cars, et cetera, right? So in that process, you know, um, again, don't believe that then against that, you know, is that, you know, we need to be uh, aware that we are substantially increasing the attack surface. So yeah. massive connectivity. I mean, no one touch upon something that is very interesting is increasing in connectivity, infrastructures that sometimes are critical and they are also very important dependencies. So being critical of our societies basically depend on that, okay? So with that framework, let's, let's crack on with the, the discussion. Um, so let me get started uh, with you, Noah. What is cybersecurity so much in the focus for critical transportation infrastructure? Well, uh, first of all, thank you, and uh, again, it's it's an honor and, and a great great thing to 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 meet you all. Uh, as I presented, uh, can you hear me? Uh, as I presented a few minutes ago. Yeah, so we got it perfectly. 
Okay, great. Uh, modern transportation systems are highly computerized and they are connected. And this connectivity is a, is a wonderful thing. It allows us to, to do wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things and to, to get, a, let's call it, to, to new frontiers physically and others. But it's not only the opportunities, it's also the challenges. And it creates this combination between the connectivity and the, uh, and the technology, many computers, different kind of computerized systems together, it's, it creates uh, a challenge. It's created a challenge that can affect our way of life in, in different ways, in different ways, because, you know, it's, it's not only the situation right now, it's also the future situation. Everything is getting way, way more connected. It, it, it's the things that we remember from last year are not relevant anymore. And of course, COVID took us, uh, let's call it a, a major jump. We created a major jump with a major problems, of course. And the mass trans transportation systems are, are highly connected so it's not only the platforms, it's not only the infrastructure, it's everything together. It's everything together. And, you know, uh, as I said, when in IAI, when we are measuring uh, if something is critical or not, we are using three main tests. Can it affect human lives? And definitely it can affect human life. I'm sure that Yossi is gonna speak about it. Think about a problem with a, a, a train that is moving uh, hazardous materials because there is a cyber problem. Uh, the damage could be catastro catastrophic. And the, the, the uh, financial aspect, the, the money that you're gonna lose, that the country or just the people, just the person is gonna lose because the traffic jams or because of catastrophe or because some of his, I don't know, materials and things didn't arrive or the, the, all of the supply chain is rely on it. So the financial test is also problematic. And the third thing is the business and the operational continuity. And think about if you need to move, let's call it very important things from one place to another, not to mention, uh, again, the human life aspect, but just to prevent them from moving to, from place to place. And the national or sometimes the international operational or even business continuity is going to be harmed. So actually, smart transportation, according to these tests, according to the way we see it in AI is, is critical infrastructure. It's critical to our way of life, the, <laughs> to our lives. Let's admit it. So this makes cyber because of the combination of the dependency on one hand and the connectivity and the vulnerability on the other hand, it makes it critical. We need to take care of it. Otherwise, we are totally exposed. Otherwise, we cannot do anything. Otherwise, we are risking our countries, our companies, our families, everything. So we need to refer it. And if I may, it's, it's not only the fact, it's, it's obvious that we need to identify it as critical infrastructure. But not only that, I think the decision makers need to understand it and to start to behave towards it as it, was, as it is critical. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Noam. Uh, let me go with you, Eddie. Do we have the current uh, relevant priorities? So thank you for the question. For, for, thank you for the invitation. Um, priorities when you have to build a plan is very important because there is so many things to be done that you need to make sure that you put your efforts where it will pay the most. Do we have the relevant priority? I will say people will always say to you that it is not the right one because we always need to go quicker, to do it faster. But what we know is that over the few last years, we've built the, I will say, the relevant methodology, the right approach. Uh, we know everywhere now how to do risk assessment. So we know to identify, how do we identify our weaknesses? We know how to identify what is the, the threats that we are, uh, we are facing and the ones that we feel will have the most important impacts on our assets. I would say it can be our ways of working, it can be uh, our train system, it can be our, our, our planes, it can be uh, our cars. So setting up the relevant priorities is something for which now we have the tools 
to be able to do that. Maybe a few years ago, it was not the case. So a few years ago, we were just you know, answering to the problems that we had, not having the big picture, understanding the situation, being able to, uh, to, to define the, the priorities. I believe that now, I will not say that we have all the relevant priorities. I will say that now we have at least all the necessary tools to be able to identify the various improvement axes. And then based on these, those improvement axes, once we will have understood the potential impact on the, the object, the system, our way of working or whatever, we'll be able to define the priorities. The other important point to, in the definition of this priority is, is coming from, I will say, the, the resource that we have in our, uh, in, at our disposal. So it's, the question is relevant, do we have the relevant priorities? The answer will include a bit of what are my resources? So what do I have, in fact, to address those priorities? And depending on my surface of, uh, of processing, I will see if I, ha I have to, to choose more or less priorities. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Did, no, and do you want to touch upon that on the on the priorities? Uh, uh, basically, do we have the current relevant priorities? Do you want to add something to or to comment? Go well, um, let, let me tell you something. It's it's obvious this is a question of uh, of priorities, and it's more than that because at the end of the day. We are speaking about the uh, the next dollar, where to put the extra dollar, you know, the last dollar sometimes, last dollar. And based on our experience and in international experience, I, I can tell you most of the decision makers uh, tend to, to accept it. Yeah, after, after a while, after a short presentation, they say, hey, this is very important, it's not them claim and I truly believe them that they thought about it by themselves and it's, it's wonderful. But when we are coming to the, you know, to the, to the main event and tell them, hey, you need to invest in it. And it's not only in tier three or two, tier two countries, it's also in tier one countries. They are starting to hesitate. And you know, this is cyber. Uh, <laughs> I always claim that the, the best uh, marketing event is when somebody is attacking the uh, the customer. Well, this is this is a joke. We can't allow it. We can't allow someone to attack uh, smart transportation because it's critical. Yeah. Now, uh, so this is a definitely a question of priorities. Yes, most of the decision makers uh, understand it. No, in my opinion, they are not moving. Uh, fast enough or efficient enough in order to solve the problem. They are just stuck with it. Now, it takes time. It's obvious that they are, it takes time. But as I mentioned before, before I mean the, the, the next, the first session today, I said the technology is moving so fast, so fast in one hand. And the bad guys are so dynamic, so innovating. I would like to, you know, to work with some of them and not from the different sides of the, of the border. And so the, the, the challenge and let's call it the risk and the threats are so high. So I'm not, in my opinion, at least some of the decision makers are pretty naive, pretty naive and, the, uh, and they are not moving efficient enough. So it's prioritized. They claim they are doing it, but they are not doing it in the right way. If I may, just one point please, please, about that. Uh, uh, you guys right, are not moving fast enough. So we, from our point of view, we are seeing that they shall be much more quicker than that. One of the elements of decisions that we need to also take in account, because it's a reality, it's a matter related to cost. Because security has a cost. That's a fact. So you, you can pretend that you have to do it because it's mandatory and so on, but the guy who has to decide and push on the button, launch the project, will have to have a kind of economical equation behind that. And it is something that we need probably to better address when it comes to cybersecurity, especially in, especially in critical infrastructure, smart transportation being one of them. Uh, we need really to make sure that it has been understood. The cost equation is understood. It will cost money, it will cost effort, it will cost people. We will have to dedicate people for security. And then once you put on the table, I will say, what is the effort that you are ready to do 
because you analyze the situation and you know what, what you have to do. So you know what the effort you put in front then, the question about priorities start to become more relevant, I would say, because in this case, you know what you can do and you know how you can implement that, you know, step by step. If not, it can be very, very complex, but uh, having being able to move fast, having decision makers uh, understanding more quickly that we cannot stay, I would say, in the same position, expecting that things will change in the future or that uh, the bad guys will go and not see your, your infrastructure is not something that we can afford anymore. I mean, we cannot say, I have a closed system, my system is uh, not connected to the outside. This is things that we are used, we are used to year, and we need to stop to year now. And people need to start to move the next step. But I fear that the, the economical equation may be the last excuse, you know, before the incident. Before you have incident, you can still claim about the economical equation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, please, please. Sorry. Oh, thank you very much, Eddie, and, and you guys, please feel free to interrupt because at the end of the day, uh, the audience learn when you guys exchange ideas, either if you agree, disagree. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. So basically you guys are experts, some of the top experts on this. So basically, you know, just feel free to, you know, to again, agree, disagree. To jump in. Yeah. Uh, jump in there, there you, please, you know, go ahead. What I want to say, thank you, is that, first of all, I'll give you two examples. First of all, about the cost. You know, the, uh, one of the former uh, advisors in, in, the, in the States for the White House, uh, Ms. Hathaway, uh, claims that even today that the damage for, uh, for uh, advanced countries because of cyber crime and cyber activity is, more, is between 2 to 4% of the GDP. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of money, of course, mm -hmm. in each, each one of our countries. Uh, so I always say, hey, you're going to save money. But in this, because smart transportation is critical, it's critical infrastructure, it's not only going to save money, it's going to save human lives, and people need to understand it. Now, on the other hand, there is our part of responsibility. Let's say, for example, our cyber lab. Alstom is one of our partners. Alstom Israel is, is part of, of a distinguished one of the leading partners of ours. And, you know, uh, not, let me share with you a few. I'm not... Uh, earning a lot of money because of this lab. We see it as, a, as, a, as, a, as another thing, another thing to build knowledge, innovation, and other stuff. And again, the Israeli government did something very nice, very, very good, very right, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I'm not sure that all of the other customers are doing it. Uh, let me share it with you. I'm, I'm moving around in the, in the world and I'm offering this lab and people come to me and say, hey, what do you mean by this? Uh, then I describe it and I describe my partners and I even sometimes offer manpower. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna bring 50% of the manpower to the table. I'm gonna teach you because Israel, we have a lot of cyber experts. This is one of our main advantages and we're very proud of it. And they say, okay, but how much money? And then things are starting to move slowly. This transportation, it's better not to move so slow. It's a bit dangerous. So this is one thing. The second thing, and again, we spoke about hospitals a few minutes ago, if you remember, sir. And when I said in 2015, 2016, hey, they are exposed, people say, hey, come on, you are a loon. Nobody is going to attack the hospital. And today we are investing a lot of money. Now, there is a huge difference between these two sectors, because while the hospitals don't have money, although their money is invested in helping people, and especially during this COVID, with the transportation, because of its segmentation, a lot of the players can invest the money. We need to demand them to invest. Maybe they don't want to, but they have the money, like in the finance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, otherwise, if it's not going to be the standard, they are not going to do it, and we are all, all wait and sit on our butt, sorry, and expect, expect something to, bad to happen, and it's going to happen. It's definitely, I'm not sure that the plane is going to fall, but the airport will going to get closed, or we're going to, be going to suffer from a huge train uh, accident or something that we can't allow ourselves. We, are, we cannot allow ourselves. Mm. And then somebody will, people will start to invest money and to blame each other, but it's going to be too late, a pretty too late. I, I guess I can uh, solve your problem, both Noam and uh, Eddie. As a regulator, I can tell you this. Uh, uh, I, uh, gonna, uh, I'm writing now uh, this day's regulation for the transportation of hazardous materials, trucks, and uh, train. 
And uh, if you look at the cost of benefit, uh, if you get cyber attack, it will cost you much more money. Uh, Israel industry, uh, if you look at 2021, uh, almost $1 million for uh, just for rent someone. So uh, as a regulator, I'm going to do some move. Uh, I'm, of course, I'm talking with the transportation uh, ministry, but uh, I have the toxin permit. Every uh, fleet in Israel, truck that uh, carrying hazardous materials gets from me a toxin permit. In A level, A is the highest level. And in order to continue to do business, we must obey uh, additional condition in uh, cyber defense. So I hope it will a little bit solve the problem of cost. I already, uh, I have this regulation almost here from June 2020 to the industry actually. And I can tell that no one complained uh, and it's uh, going very uh, good in Israel now. Again, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to say, first of all, this is great to hear it. As an Israeli, you know, I see these huge trucks moving uh, next to my kids all the time. But I think that Israel is not uh, the example because Israel understood in 2011 and even much earlier the, the risks and Israel invests a lot of money. You know, I the, one of the main advantages of the Israel of Israel in regarding cyber is the awareness. People are aware of cyber. People are willing to cooperate with the INCD, with the other ministries like yourself, sir. So, and I can tell you based on my experience, we're coming to advanced country and say, hey, we have regulation, we cannot allow it to ourselves. It, it requires to change the laws and we say, hey, you have a problem, not only with hazardous materials or with transportation, with other critical infrastructure and say, yes, we have a problem. It's gonna take us some time to solve it. And we try to help them as much as we can because I want them as customers and I'm pretending to be a nice guy. But at the end of the, of the day, uh, it takes them too much time. Now, this is, again, as I'm proud to say it as an Israeli, as a former uh, INCD guy, we have our own advantages. But at the end of the day, in most of the places, or at least in major parts of, of the world, it takes the uh, customers too much time. I'm not sure where our audience uh, are from, but we can, I'm sure that in some of the countries in the, the regions, they are not advanced enough. I'm sure of it. Yeah, but you, you're right. Uh, if I take the, the railway transportation, that's true that uh, if you look at in the world, the, it's not very advanced when we, we speak about cybersecurity. But if we come back to the example of Israel, Israel can be a flagship because it is a, it, Israel is in, in the front of this uh, discussion, in the front of this uh, implementing things and, uh, and regulation is key because when you have industry like railway where there is a lot of, I would say, uh, uh, safety uh, regulation, uh, homologation of equipment and people will not change their products for the sake of changing them. So even if you have risk, they will try to manage the risk. When there is regulation, they try to comply to the regulation and that's in their DNA. So, Having the regulation moving forward and quote unquote imposing things to be done can help us to, to address this, uh, this slowness because by nature, if I take again the example of railway, when you put something in place, you would like to keep it like that forever. So they are not in the, their DNA ready to change. We need the regulation. I would prefer to have the regulation than the bad examples because you know when some crisis happen, people are ready to change. I would prefer much more that we work in advance. We have the right regulation. We explain why they have to address the risk. And then they can set their priorities and move forward instead of waiting for the big incidents and having people chasing solutions uh, uh, you know, without having uh, with good, good directions. I, I, guess, uh, I think both, both right Norm and Eddie, Israel is not good example because Israel is under attack 10 times than other countries in the world. And that's why we have, we have in Israel, at least in Israel, to move fast. Uh, that I'm doing now, and I guess we can be a use case for other countries. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's an interesting an interesting point. I I, I had a discussion 
we had a panel yesterday with Israel Electric here with uh, what Josie's neck. I mean, you you uh, Josie know Josie perfectly, right? So Josie knows, knows a couple of things on uh, utility cybersecurity. He has been around for for quite a while, right? So we were talking about you know uh, the, you know uh, education and awareness in in a, in a critical infrastructure, and he told us you know something that was astonishing to me. I was arguing that it's very difficult to change culture. We were talking about specifically about phishing, for example, you know, educating your, you know, a large workforce in a corporate just not to click on things, you know. And I argue, say, listen, listen, culture has inertia. It's inertia, like in basic physics, you know. So it's very difficult to change for a 100% staff of tens of thousands of people that and I was arguing that you know it's not possible. We need to define processes that avoid that one organization can be seriously impacted, but just by one guy clicking on that. It's it's not possible. If we rely on that, we are gonna fail. And he basically told challenged me and he said, "Listen, we launched a, uh, uh, an educational campaign in Israel Electric, and after that, nobody out of the eleven thousand employees." click on a single email, which is astonishing to me. It's astonishing. And I told him a little bit, but the culture is different. It's, it's, there, is, there is a key element, a key cultural element that is different. Okay, so, so I mean, and we need to be aware of that. I mean, Israel has some particularities in some way, you know, in terms of, you know, the education, the strength of the cybersecurity and so on and so forth. I don't think that can be extrapolated to every single community. You go to Brazil, you go to Spain, you will do I mean, I don't want to name any country in a, in a, in a bad way, but I, I, I mean, I see that there are important differences. You analyze Europe, there are also very important differences uh, among countries. So I don't think that is, 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 is gonna work. I mean, I think we need to be aware of that, of that important difference. But in, in any case, I don't know if you wanted to add something, no. no. Yeah. Look, awareness is, 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 is a major building block and we need to invest in it. But two things, first of all, if they succeed uh, 100 bulletproof uh, with 11,000 people, well, I would like to speak with their IT manager and to, to check it, but it's okay. This is, this is one thing. Um, but second, I think that awareness is limited, but and with it, we need to support it with our systems. I just presented uh, an hour ago, some of our offering to, to like monitoring, like IR, whatever, but it's more than that. When we are speaking about critical infrastructure, it's not only a question of awareness. Awareness is interesting, but when you're speaking about prioritize, uh, pr uh, how to prioritize critical infrastructure like smart transportation, it's the decision makers awareness. And this is a different uh, ball game. This is a different ball game because we are speaking about decision makers. We need them to understand. Let's put the, the lorry driver aside for a minute. He's an important guy. I, I like them, I depend on them, it's, it's okay. But I need the, the decision makers, the regulators like you all see here, in here to, to understand. And I don't have any problem with the, the Israeli decision makers, but in other places to understand the threat, to understand that they are accountable for it. And this is one of the main problems with cyber in general, but focus on, but also, but not only that, but also in smart mobility and smart transportation. Somebody need to understand that he is accountable, that he is going to be the guy who is in charge or the guy who is going to be blamed. And then we can advance, then it will be, it will be much easier to them to invest the money, to change the regulation, to support the uh, officials that are fighting with the private sector, or the, the players that don't like to invest money or to lose money, but this is necessary. And meanwhile, on parallel, we need to educate our, our people to support them with better systems, to have different capabilities, but we have to start. And this is one, of, I mentioned the Israeli magic an hour ago. This is one of the explanations, my explanation, for the Israeli magic. Somebody was accountable. Somebody understood that he is responsible. And I uh, allow myself and Yossi, feel free to, to, to correct me if I'm wrong. In Israel, the Ministry of, of Environment, uh, whatever, 
is responsible. And the minute they understood that they are responsible, they change regulation. They uh, de demand the, uh, the different players to comply with it. And this is the magic. This is the key. You know, you're absolutely right, Norm. Uh, I also uh, think that uh, awareness is, I would say in Hebrew, the tip of the glacier. Uh, I have almost 92 uh, controls in, the, in my cyber guide for the industry, and you have to obey most of them, not only awareness, what you're going to do with, with uh, this granted day play, for example. And uh, if we're talking about uh, trucks, so it's more dangerous than uh, real cars. Uh, we have many sensors for monitoring sharp turns, uh, for sudden braking, opening door, uh, detection and identification of thefts, uh, uh, many other sensors which expose uh, these tracks to uh, cyber attack. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, for example, ammonia track, which uh, carry about 20, 25 tons of ammonia. It's toxin gas, very toxin, uh, in case that this kind of track roll over because of some GNSS attack. So you, you poison actually the environment, you get fatal uh, damage to public health. Uh, we have trucks with gasoline, about 11,000 gallons for each truck moving uh, all over the country, the, the state. We have LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, 43,000 tons and hydrogen and many other uh, flammable and toxic uh, uh, materials. And our nightmare is kind of comprehensive uh, attack like we, uh, we experienced last year in the water facilities. Uh, it's enough to roll over five or six trucks uh, all over the countries and we have a disaster. Uh, we have a chaos. So we must uh, move very fast. And uh, we're doing a lot of efforts now, in, especially in our ministry, because we are very strong in regulation. Actually, it's the, the strongest, strongest uh, ministry in Israel with regulation and enforcement. Uh, the fines are very, very high. We're talking about 600. Thousand euros without court that we can uh, give to, uh, to, uh, to the industry or to the fleet, the truck fleet. We're talking about uh, criminal uh, things, and you can also uh, just stop the business. You, if you uh, will not renew the toxin permit, you, you stop the business. So it's not just awareness, it's many other uh, aspects. And uh, just to add one quick point, please, Eddie, the, the, the question was, are we doing enough for, for our critical infrastructure? And I think that Noam touched the point. Who is we? I mean, there is the regulators, there is the asset owner, asset operators, there is the product providers, and we all need to do something, of course. But it's very important when we say we to understand the responsibility. And I think that was what you were saying. Someone needs to feel I am responsible for that. And then this person will start to put in place, nominate people, put the attachment plan, follow, put the monitoring in place, until it is something which is, I would say, shared, uh, not really in, on, under someone accountability. That's who that you will feel a bit more the slowness, a bit more the, the reluctance to move, and the good excuses that will be fine by everyone to explain that they will do cyber tomorrow, not now, blah, 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 blah. Uh, because they don't, they don't feel responsible for it. Once you have nominated someone saying that now it's your problem, you at least need to drive it. Uh, you see that some things can be started and you can have some, some movement, I would say. If not, uh, uh, the slowness of the industry is, is taking the lead, I would say, and uh, uh, you don't have the fast moving industry, in big industry and critical infrastructure, uh, nuclear plant, uh, gas, or whatever. You are in industry which are by nature a bit. Conservative, they like to keep things as they were. So introducing the fast changing world is not easy if nobody feels responsible for it. So you touch upon a very very interesting topic on, on the on the basically because the, the, you are actually right. I mean the, the question by itself might be confusing. So we will need to define you know 
uh, that we component. So basically, that's in, in some way that's related to, to this question. So is there a, a sense of awareness as a society? I mean, with the key stakeholders, you know, involved, you know, in this. I mean, from uh, the the politicians to regulators to actually the society, because at the end of the day, actions from politicians, you know, are in some way reactive. So when there is a concern, you know, in the in the society, you know, they they react, you know, and in some way they take action. So is is there? A sense of awareness of the issues we are facing. Let me give you an example. You know, when we have the, you know, the the unfortunate uh, nuclear incident in Japan. Actually, I, I was at that time there. Okay, and most of the people, even in Japan, they wasn't even aware of the the seriousness of, of of that incident. The seriousness of that incident is is classified at the same level of severity of Chernobyl. Although most of the people believe that they are in totally different tiers. So uh, the question is, most of the people wasn't aware of the issue. And not this is anything about nuclear energy or whatever, you know, nuclear energy is, is clear, it's necessary. I mean, at this very moment we are seeing that, okay? But let's get back to transportation. Is there a sense of awareness? with all the important changes that are happening right now, because there is a lot of stuff going on. I mean, that digitalization stuff is, is super nice when you are digitalizing, you know, I don't know, your home, it's, it's, it's nice, you know. When you are digitalizing an aircraft, you know, it's, it's a complex thing. In the past, aircraft used to be super safe because, you know, there was a concept that there's security by obscurity, you know, so nobody knew anything about that, what is a BOR, what is the, the, the GPS, was, you know, right now, we're, you know, uh, we, we are seeing guys super well-funded, super well-funded. The access to the technology just to research that is in Amazon. Is 500 euros. You want to set up, you know, basically the control of an aircraft. You can you can buy that for it's, it's less than 2,000. You can buy antennas. You can buy everything. So security by obscurity is not any anymore there. And we are substantially increasing the attack surface. You know, adding even a standard technology into aircraft. You know, I'm not saying that is bad. Again, it's that's a super complex discussion. Okay, it's again, it's again, it's a, it's a serious ana analysis of the attack surface and uh, it's a risk management decision too, and you know all that stuff. And I, I personally believe that we need to we need to, to progress. I mean, it's necessary because you know, uh, you know, there is a need for that. But is there an awareness across the key different stakeholders, you know, of the challenge we are facing? That's that's the key question for me. Do we understand that? Exactly. I think that the, the, the trend of green and smart transportation is something that you cannot give up. It's too late. I mean, you need it for operation. You need it for user experience, passenger experience. You need it for better operation performance. So you will not be able to move back. You need it for green. If you want your system to be green, you have an energy consumption system, braking system, better usage of your motor. So all of that is there. So we need to use it. The, the, the question is, the flip side of that is quote unquote cybersecurity because you put more and more electronic software connectivity. So when you are saying, is there an awareness? I think that it's up to the subject matter experts, the people who are, have understood that there is a point to start to do their part of, uh, you know, communicating more and more. It's not very easy because you, you come with quote unquote problems. You are not saying people that life is beautiful. You are just explaining to them what are the dangers. So you need to explain that a way that they will understood. You don't want to prevent them to do things. You want to have them doing things in security, but you would like them to do things, but in security. And it's up to us to make sure that it's understood, starting by the decision-making levels, and then up to the basic operational levels, which are one of the elements of the defenses. So the ONS need to go from uh, the C-level suite of the company to the, the operational guy doing the job on a daily basis, and of course, if you want things to move, better for you to have the management of the decision maker being convinced and at the same time, the operational guy saying, yes, it's feasible and we have to do it. 
if you have only one side of it, it will not work. But I mean, it's up to the people who are understanding the problem to put it in a way that it can be understood by others. Because sometimes when you speak about cyber, it seems that it's far from the problem of every day. We need to put it away that people will understand. And after, unfortunately, we need to go on to explain to decision makers. And the explanation is maybe not a very pleasant conversation because they will have to spend money. They will have to, to put people dedicated to that, put organization, change their, use, their processes. You are used to do that like that, you will do it differently. Maybe refrain a bit the, the, we say, the release of some new technologies because they need to secure it before. So, okay, they will have to learn to live with this new, uh, this new chapter. But I believe that there is a kind of responsibility from the guys who knows to go to the other one, and, but in a, with a language that can be understood by users. I think that the cyber, I think that the cyber protection uh, uh, must come from country level, from the country, from the regulator first. Uh, I'm not sure that the stockholders uh, care about so much, or maybe they don't have the awareness. Uh, very few of them know cyber and know the meaning of cyber. So uh, I, I think it must come from the regulator. Uh, I can tell what the steps that I'm doing right now. Uh, I already met with nine car cybersecurity startup in Israel. They have uh, products for protection uh, to understand the threats and to understand the solutions. Uh, I met with three telematics, very big telematics uh, companies in Israel. And very soon I'm going to meet with three uh, major uh, vehicle fleets in Israel, companies uh, that get toxin permit for me, so I can be uh, the regulator. And the next stage is developing a methodology for protecting trucks in Israel, trucks for, for, uh, transporting hazardous materials. This is my mandate in Israel, no, not a regular vehicle or aircraft, uh, just if they carrying hazardous materials. And I'm going to pilot one of the vehicle fleets uh, in Israel that received toxin panic for me. And I must then uh, forward the result to public uh, comments in Israel for the purpose of issuing cyber guide. I think uh, this process will take a uh, few months. I, I, I just spend a lot of time on uh, this issue. If I may, sir. Um... I totally agree with Fedi. Uh, the technology is moving ahead. We don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with anyone who wants to, to pull it back. It's, 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 it's impossible. We, we depend on it. We depend on this new kind of transportation, green, quick, uh, efficient, everything, but it's vulnerable. We are familiar with it. Now about the decision makers. Well, uh, the continent are, uh, continents are moving. No, they're moving, but they're moving too slow. And this is regarding your question, sir. Um, I, I can tell you based on our, my experience, uh, with your quantum, you know, just as an example, let's check, let's take, sorry, uh, a test. When I'm approaching a decision makers, uh, the guy who is responsible for the cybersecurity, national cybersecurity in different countries, and I'm gonna ask them, hey, please define I never ask how many critical infrastructures do you have, but please define the main sectors. They start with, uh, with the electricity, the energy, uh, with water sometimes, with communication. But when, you know, in, at least at some of the uh, Q1 countries where they know how to identify smart transportation is critical. But in others, including Q1, they can't do it. We need to help them to, to reach this point. And then they need, when they need to invest the money or to decide where to put the extra dollar, they start to hesitate. And everybody can ex explain why they need to invest in to, to protect the power plant or the power grid or whatever. And of course, this is super important. I never want to claim it's not important. And they said, what about the airport? We mentioned the airport uh, an hour ago. And they say, okay, let's wait for a while. Next step and others. So the continents are moving. People, the decision makers and the major stakeholders 
are willing to understand. Sometimes, you know, let's take the uh, the airport authority. You come to them and say, hey, I, you need to invest money. And say, okay, we're willing to do so. But they are not willing to invest in end-to-end -end solution because it's expensive. And I can tell them about Melissa Hathaway and her 2 to 4% of the GDP. It doesn't really... Uh, they don't find it interesting enough. Uh, they claim, okay, we will have to wait. We need somebody to support us. The decision maker itself say, hey, I need to invest in the hospitals first. So things are moving, but they are moving slow. But again, and I think this is a key issue. Like, not like other sectors, the transportation, transportation sector is uh, independent, at least from the economic side. I don't think, I don't claim that they need to invest all of the money by themselves. It's, uh, don't misunderstand me for a minute, but they have some of the capabilities they have. So the regulators need to invest money. The regulators can publish new regulation and to demand them to comply with them because otherwise we are still exposed. Um, expecting the decision makers, the national level and the international to demand, to have their own demand, hey, you need to secure at least some of the networks. You need to secure or to, uh, to obey and comply with this, uh, specific regulation, critical one. Because if we're gonna lose an airplane, if we're gonna lose an airplane, or if somebody will mess with a train that is moving, I don't know, thousands of people or toxic materials and going to create a catastrophe, it's going to be too late. So in my opinion, yes, people are starting to understand. And the best example is that we are speaking right now about it. You know, somebody is investing money and time, but we are not moving quick enough, quick and good enough. Ah, but to your point, the, the, the stakeholders are, so the, the regulator, the asset owner and the product manufacturers, all of us, we need to move, but the we for me is starting by the, by the regulator because when you buy security, if you have to invest in a new hospital, you will see the hospital, a big building, which is there. If you have to invest in the security of the hospital, the hospital will look the same, but you have invested a lot of money. So sometimes it's not easy for the guy to move forward. So compliance to some regulation will help us a lot because if it's compliance, you know, Generally, big corporations, they have compliance officers, they have to show their compliance matrix and so on. Then they are doing the efforts. If there is no compliance, they will understand. They will say, oh, it's important. I understand it's important. I listen to you. But at the end of the day, again, the economical equation will come back. They will, not, they will do prioritization. And unfortunately, until they are hit by the cyber attack, they will say, okay, it's for the user, not for me. You, it, it's a bit of what is happening. So, uh, you, you take, you realize that you are in danger when you feel the danger. If you don't feel the danger, it's uh, sometimes difficult. Sir, I, I fully uh, accept your, your opinion and uh, tend to agree with you, of course. But I have to say, based on I experience, and I'm meeting with a lot of decision makers and representatives of different cyber organizations. I think that regulation is another tool, very important one. Very, very important one. We can find it everywhere. We know it's a major tool in Europe and in other tier one countries, but this is just another tool. And I think that the most important thing is the decision makers themselves, the officials that are responsible, need to understand. And I'm saying it again, and I'm sorry for it, but they need to understand that they are responsible, they are accountable, and they have to use their tools that we are giving or the country is giving them the money, the regulation, the authority. Otherwise, otherwise we are exposed because for example, uh, 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 an hour ago I spoke about standards. People coming and say, hey, we have regulation, we have standards. But the standards are definitely not enough and regulations sometimes are limiting us. You're working in Europe, the GDPR is a wonderful regulation, wonderful, but it creates also some problems that we need to deal with, to mitigate with, to solve another problem. And it's okay, I'm, I'm not against GDPR, don't misunderstand me for a minute. But regulation is only a tool, a major one that national level officials have in order to uh, improve the, the environment, the ecosystem and other stuff. But we need 
the, the, the key in here is that somebody will, will understand that he is responsible. So he need to start to move, to publish regulation, to invest money, to demand uh, people to comply with its uh, with his demands. Otherwise, we are exposed. But when you do uh, when you do regulation, you, you, first you have to do it good. You don't you have good regulation. Uh, for example, in my industry. Before I wrote uh, the cyber guide, I just piloted uh, many uh, factories day by day inside the factory, and I build and develop the methodology inside with the uh, operate, operating managers, with the IT staff, with the OT staff, and uh, it's good regulation. Another aspect for regulation is to enforce it. It's it's. It's very easy to give regulation uh, uh, to the uh, to the industry, but you have also to enforcement, and everybody knows that you are uh, you can enforce this regulation. Uh, we are in the end of this session, so I'd like to bring up another uh, another topic. Uh, you know, all of the world we. Uh, try to uh, promote green energy and IoT devices uh, just to, to make uh, the, the plans to be competitive. Uh, for example, the IoT devices they just extend the taking surface, we all know, but the green energy as well. If we're talking about hydrogen uh, cars or hydrogen vehicles, uh, you have to know that you have to storage and you have to transport. And I, uh, I had I had the honor to uh, to be in a session for hydrogen uh, from a Dutch country. And you must know that if you mix hydrogen gas with with the uh, air with oxygen in a homogeneous mixture, you have uh, explosion. So you we have to consider all this. Things and we have to uh, take care of uh, this risk when we, we're going to develop the green energy and devices and everything. Hey, thank you, uh, Yossi. Uh, Evi, do we use the correct methodologies? The correct methodologies? So, uh, as I think that you're right, because we need to have clear processes if we want of a whole industry to move from where we are to the target, we need to have the right approach, I would say. Uh, I, I believe that today the methodologies are there. So everyone is aware that risk assessment is something important. You need to do it, to master it, to update it. Uh, training is very important. Crisis simulation uh, is important. So implementing the right measures. So I think that the, the tools to do the job are there. One of the difficulties is that is that they are not natural tools for everyone. Take an example, do a crisis simulation, a tabletop exercise. It costs you almost nothing. You can do a very, I would say, a, a complex one that will cost you money, but you can do a very simple one. Everyone taking a role and we take it one hour is done. Why is not uh, becoming the DNA of everyone? So the, the methodology on the, on the tools, the way to improve and to do more in terms of protecting our critical infrastructure, they are there. We can criticize, we can improve, but they are there. Now, the fact that people start to embed that in their DNA and start to use it, it is where there is still an effort to be done and probably more communication, more forum like this one, more forum where uh, we can speak and we can see what is the reaction, what are the questions, and so on, adjust, I would say, the, the topics that we are touching uh, uh, more and more. But I think that it's maybe more communication are needed in order that people who are supposed to be the decision maker on cyber security. Sometimes, you know, with some people, they have not even understood that they were supposed to be in charge. And they will say to you at the end of the story, oh, okay, so I, maybe I should have done that. Yes, because it's, it is your job, guy. So it is your job to initiate something. You are not the expert, but you need to put that in the agenda. I'm repeating very often to, to, to the team, put cyber in the agenda because, before it becomes the agenda. And for me, in terms of methodology, put it in the agenda, put the topic on the agenda, start discussing it, nominate the right guy, and, and then it will come. So we have the tools, but unfortunately, I will say the, 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 the integration is not yet totally completed. Sir, so if, if I may jump in. Um, I mentioned that we are establishing a smart transportation cyber lab. 
Uh, with Alstom, with uh, Alec Matos, with IBI, with uh, other uh, distinguished uh, partners. I think that one of the major uh, challenges of this lab is not only the technology, not only to find its place inside the Israeli ecosystem. It's not only a question of regulation because we are get supported. This is the way of customer by the Israeli Ministry of Transportation. It's the methodology. We have the tools, we have the cyber experts, we have the knowledge from other and different domains in the cyber, in transportation also brings its huge knowledge to the table. But we need to combine them all together and we need to adopt and to uh, develop a new kind of uh, methodology to deal with the threats and the risks, technology, uh, strat strategy, intelligence, all of the others for this, uh, for this smart transportation, because it's, it's part of the cyber domain, it's part of the transportation the domain and mobility domain, and we mess them to mix them together. So we have different kinds of challenges. Of course, I, I probably agree with what was said, that Eddie just said, we have understanding, we have the tools, we have lesson learned, but we need to adapt them and we need to uh, improve them and fit them to this own reality, new reality, because otherwise we're going to use the old, let's call it old world tools, and they are not good enough. The next session, I have a, a keynote. I will introduce the new methodology that I'm developing now. It's, it's for uh, trucks, but uh, you can adopt it to uh, any kind of transportation. It's the same, same system. Okay, good to know. And Noam, what are the key yes. cyber... Uh, please, please uh, Justice, what, what happened? You, you were saying... I'll meet you in my uh, keynote uh, in five minutes from now, or ten minutes. Seven okay. minutes, exactly. Seven minutes, yes. Uh, Noam, what are the key cybersecurity solutions you are focusing on? Well, thank you. Um... Look, we are focusing on automated uh, detection and uh, response solution that will increase the visibility uh, from one hand and response automatically to risky scenarios. So now, this is a very fancy title, but what we are trying to bring to the table to supply our customers and especially the Israeli ecosystem is better tools. And based on our experience, it, it, it's not only the, you know, the as he mentioned, the tip of the iceberg. Technology is part of it, but it should be much more advanced. It should be automatic. So it's not only the solution or the test bed or the uh, specific system. It should be automated system, AI sometimes based system that are connected. It's not only the technology. I need the, the you know, we are all living now in the age of XDR and other stuff. We need system to be uh, connected. The idea is here of lesson learned, automated uh, lesson learned is, 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 is a key, is a key issue. Otherwise we are gonna, uh, our solutions are not good enough. So we are looking for technological solutions, automated one. I don't want too much people to interfere with it. And I need IR, I need response solutions that will help the, the systems in an automated way to deal with the attack because the attack is going to be here. It's, it's just a question of time. And as I was shown an, an hour ago, more than an hour ago, it already started. So this is one major pillar of building group. In addition, we are focusing also uh, on building solutions and services. We spoke uh, a few minutes ago about the fact that we need our solutions to become efficient. Uh, efficient, efficient enough, or, or more efficient, let's call it, based on the cloud, based on service model, because otherwise nobody is going to use them. It's going to, they're going to be too expensive or too complicated, so they are not going to be efficient enough. So we have different solutions to protect the, the ecosystem, different solutions to protect platforms, different solutions to encourage innovation, like the lab that I presented, and they are mixed of technology, methodology, strategy. I also presented it today, this, this uh, strategy of ours. And all of them together to try to create and to, I'm not sure to create, to improve. And this is one of the aims, 
the, uh, the relevance, uh, relevancy and the capability of the resilience level of the ecosystem, of the end-to-end -end ecosystem. Justy, let me ask you a question. You touched upon this during the discussion. What steps are currently being taken to defend against cyber threats to vehicles and especially trucks of hazardous materials? Do you want to touch upon this? Or do you want to prefer to jump into the, the, the keynote? Up, totally up to you. Uh, I guess I uh, introduced it in the keynote because the a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay, good. So uh, let me just uh, ask you a final question to you, Eddie. Do we need more coordination? We have been talking, touching about coordination, probably it's, it's, it's among the key stakeholders, probably even, you know, uh, like an ISAC or, you know, uh, uh, private public partnerships or uh, even a global uh, coordination at this level, if possible, because, you know, what we're seeing right now is that it's very difficult uh, at the global level, even at the European level to agree on on important topics to, 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 to reach an agreement uh, on that. So do we need more coordination alignment in the industry? In fact, the, the, the threat is, is changing fast, is moving, is uh, strengthening. Nobody will arrive alone. Nobody will arrive alone. alone. It's, uh, it's something that we need to do together. So I think that we need to get to know each other a bit better. So because we are each of us trying to do things on our side uh, with goodwill, but it's important to know what the users are doing. So there is a framework here, there is an experience done there, there is some expertise. So it's, it's what, what I'm, I'm expecting in terms of coordination is a more, I would say, a collaboration, more in exchange of information between, between the various stakeholders, not necessarily through Isaac or through a very rigid or structured, I would say, way, but at least that people know each other. That's the first, uh, the first important point is that we, sh we shall have directories of names. You know the guys on the other side, you know what they are doing, and then you can start to build relationships because I don't believe that one industry or in one industry, one player can alone succeed in improving the security globally. It's something that we'll need to do together. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, no, and you want to touch upon, you know, basically the coordination. I mean, not just in Israel, but you know, at the, the regional or global level? Uh, when we are speaking about cyber, cyber capability, cyber defense, cyber resilience, these days, definitely when we are dealing with a new kind of advanced international technology, it's not a, we are living in a different region now, but this is cyber, this is borderless domain. And in my opinion, this is an international question. And for example, it was mentioned by one, one of my colleagues here about the information sharing. I believe that info, information sharing should, should be mandatory as possible. I'm aware of the limitation, of course. And I think it should be international. For example, uh, I mentioned this, uh, our lab as, as a product. The, uh, the, one of our ideas is, is to have a network of such labs in different places so people can, and I mentioned the term uh, think tank uh, today. Uh, I, I want people to, to, to be coordinated. People like researchers, like regulators, because we need to learn from each other. We need to share our, you know, again, this is, this is not a question of national security. It's, it's, it's international security. If there is a problem in one smart car or, or in an airplane, today it's in the States, tomorrow it's in Africa and, 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 and whatever, it's gonna land in, in, in Israel. So we are all under a huge risk and the supply chain and the supply chain crisis that you are facing right now in the, in the world, it's, it's the best example for it. It's not one country, one nation problem. It's a problem for all of us. So we need to be coordinated. I expect, for example, the regulators to, to share their knowledge. And I think uh, as a former uh, Israeli government employee for 30 years, I expect the, the, the Israeli government, I think this is a great opportunity to, to lead the effort to become an international major player. And I think that they are doing it because without coordination, we're gonna fail. We're going to be alone against the bad guys, and they, they just need to find one weak spot. Well, we need to protect the whole ecosystem. 
Okay. So wonderful, guys. We don't have more time. Uh, it has been a fascinating discussion. I have learned a lot from you, from you guys. I would like to thank you for taking the time to, to join this discussion, for sharing your you know, expertise and insight with the global community. It's, it's very valuable. And uh, Eddie, merci beaucoup. Noan, Josie, it's been a pleasure. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. My pleasure. Just before you leave, I have an important uh, announcement for you guys. We have a fascinating discussion, right? Well, uh, actually keynotes. This is gonna be covering, you know, as Josie introduced a little bit before, the topic of hazardous materials and cyber regulation. He's got a unique uh, regulation all over the world. And we are gonna spend the time we might need, you know, you're gonna have all the time, Josie, to share your, your insights on that. So please stay around with us, you know? Uh, because it's, I promise it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. bye. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.